Sheno, Ntenga Nole. He has saw Ntenga Nole. Mano, Ntenga Nole, Nke Mabanta Alicaro, follow, follow. The Cabindo Mandima, Doko Dora. Well, and took it. Officials at the helm of the coordination effort say seize an asset and will be difficult to replace. What surprises me, if you consider her age, if you see her age mates right now, they are doing nothing because they are very much old. They cannot obviously be able to come up to the rice field here. But for her, obviously, she's still strong. She's still strong. She has the stamina and she can still work. She speaks in riddles and refers proudly to the bounties of a season's production. Bless also is this land spread with various produce as far as the eye can see. The crops are mainly groundnut, maize, rice and sorghum. But that's not the end of it all. Plowing is still continuing under the directive of the president. I'm really impressed. The crops are doing very fine. You could see the maize, how they are. Everywhere is green. Maize crop in here? Definitely. We have maize crop in here. We have sorghum and maize. This year, obviously, Abdunya, what I can tell you, we are blessed by His Excellency because whatever advice he gives, the type of crop that we should put in a certain plot, definitely, what, if we go by his advice, I'm really impressed. It works very well. And, and what type of fertilizer do you apply here? Only organic manure or do you have other fertili fertilizer supply here? Well, before we had organic manure here, but he advised me to apply urea, which we did. Okay. Yeah, really. Which we did sometimes uh, two weeks back. And really, when we apply urea, the whole farm, I, s I can see changes, obviously. Many other communities have joined the crusade in Kanilai at the weekend. Some of them came from Mayok, Marakisa, with many other groups from neighboring Senegal. Abinjai, GRTS. The University of the Gambia, in collaboration with the Ministry of Energy and the ECOWAS Regional Center for Renewable Energy and Renewable Efficiency, has kick-started a five-day red screen training program, one of the world's leading clean energy software. The training seeks to address key barriers for deployment of renewable energy and energy efficiency technologies in the ECOWAS region. Aji Amisise reports. The approach to clean energy technologies, guising from quaint to modern, are now commercial realities, coming at a time when conventional fossil fuel-based systems are identified as agents of local pollution, with their effect on climate change ever worsening. The Red Screen Clean Energy Software, associated with identifying and assessing potential energy projects, is one of the world's leading clean energy decision-making software on which stakeholders in the Gambia are being trained. The training provides the opportunity for local training institutions and companies. And also it provides the capacity of stakeholders within our sub-region. The fact that ECOWAS, our subsystem, or West Africa's international political system is taking the lead or is playing a role is very encouraging. It means that the sub-regional organization is seriously concerned with development in the sub-region because without, without energy, there cannot be development. The ECOWAS Regional Center for Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency with the Ministry of Energy and the University of the Gambia have staged a five-day training exercise looking at ways of demystifying the read screen software to bring to our advantage renewable energy resources mainly untapped or underutilized with blame on limited knowledge. Cognizant of this barrier for investment in renewable energy and energy efficiency in the region, 
ECRI, with support from UNIDO, has embarked on conducting training on red screen software in each member states in involving all relevant stakeholders. Red screen is one of the most often used software worldwide for estimation of potential clean energy projects. Red screen significantly reduces costs both financial and time associated with in identifying and assessing potential energy projects. Though the much needed benefits of renewable energy are unquestionable, assessing the viability of clean energy projects has been the drawback with other substantial barriers to be tackled. Capacity development on a software deemed the proven enabler of clean energy projects worldwide is anticipated to even enhance economies continent-wide. Without energy, we cannot talk about development. It's key to development. Therefore, we must have access to energy. But that energy must be sustainable. Therefore, we must talk about renewable energy and energy efficiency. Because we cannot be lay on this fuel energy or, energy or conventional energy. Therefore, having this training will allow us to, do, to build our capacity. This five-day capacity building exercise on the red screen software is anticipated to end on a high note, standardizing and integrating project analysis to evaluate energy production. For the Gambia, with the spotlight on science, technology and innovation, realizing her full energy potential through the red screen promotes both spectrums. For GRTS News, I am Aja Misise. Well, officials of the Gambia Tourism Board, the National Environment Agency and the Department of Physical Planning have embarked on an inspection tour of the tourism development area to ascertain the legality of beach bars along the country's beachfront. Our Babukar Kamara accompanied the tour party and he reports the move is in line with tourism authorities bid to clean up the beach and attract more tourists. He arrived to inspect the structures of some illegal beach bars that were served with notices to close their operations and some with possible demolition exercises to follow. What prompted this um, outing um, is as a result of some of the activities that we see from the Lay Battle to the um, Senegambia Kairaba Beach Strip. Um, I was out with the TSU commanding officer and um, my manager of quality control and licensing out on a jogging one day and uh, we saw a lot of illegal boating activities illegal sport fishing activities illegal establishments you know on that strip so we thought that um, we should probably do um, a coast to coast meaning from like atlantic banjul all the way to Katong to have a better appreciation and understanding to help us to strategize in terms of how to address some of these illegal activities. Their inability to serve as comfort zones for the tourism industry is on appealing to authorities, creating more room for investigation on the legality of their establishments. Uh, according to uh, the, the tourism authority, all beach bars should be temporal structures. But you know, uh, according to what we've seen so far, none of them are temporal. Uh, almost uh, all of them are permanent structures which are built by uh, with cement block and uh, concrete so I don't know what will be the next step of the G, uh, the GT, GT board but we are with them to make sure that whoever built those structures and it is not within their uh, curriculum we serve them with a demolition notice so and the other option was if we met anybody uh, during the construction uh, stage, we should uh, serve the person with a stop notice. But unfortunately, all the structures we met, they are almost completed. Some are even in use. Then we already, uh, we almost uh, keep on serving them the demolition notices. I have observed two major issues. The first one being the discharge of um, drainage in the form of surface runoff, which is rainwater. And I've also observed sewage being discharged. This, the sources of these discharges are from hotels and other industries. Another observation is waste. There seems to be, to some level, poor waste management in most of the uh, industries or the most of the um, hotels around the area. And I've also noticed that there have been boats, old boats, which, have, which are no longer seaworthy, which have been abandoned on the beach as well. The inspection exercise starts at Lashio Atlantic Hotel in Banjun and is expected to end at Katong within a period of four days. However, the fact-finding exercise, first of its kind, aims to clean the coastal tourism strip 
with unwanted activities for the promotion of the Smiling Coast as a perfect holiday destination for